So I appreciate you for uh, the previous support you have given to me and my government, especially during the trying period of uh, attack by herdsmen against the people of Benue State. You too stood tall to defend us and to extend our pains to the rest of the world. Um, uh, today, we are relatively calm. Uh, it was through your support and our cry that led the federal government to send in Operation Word Stroke. And today, the state is relatively calm. Uh, there are still issues that we're contending with, but I, I think with the support of the security agencies, we'll be able to overcome them if politics does not come in, like it's been rumored that uh, they will allow insecurity to overwhelm us uh, so that they will have their way and bring further might. That is what the APC leadership is telling us and telling the people and insinuating. So, but we are quite vigilant. For us as people who believe in the rule of law, we have always canvassed for the right thing to be done at all times. Uh, people to be law abiding in their conduct and not to engage into anything that will cause lawlessness because when you allow a situation of lawlessness you are inviting anarchy and when there is anarchy then it becomes very difficult who will be safe and what happens to us at the end of the day for today we have successfully completed our electioneering campaign around the 23 local governments of Benue State. And um, after making consultation, we went around and overwhelmingly the people came out and uh, prayed for us, gave us their blessings, and also gave us open support. Uh, with their massive attendance of all our rallies in the 23 uh, local governments. Well, so substantially, we have completed our campaigns and based on what we were told. And having been in this game for about 37 years, I can tell you that uh, we're good to go. Uh, we have no challenge, and that is why the, 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 the APC is uh, just making noise, uh, saying all kind of insinuating, telling lies uh, based on falsehood, and claiming that, well, whatever happens, they will use federal might. We're waiting for them because I know from experience that when you don't uh, have the support of the people, you cannot talk about rigging election anywhere, except you, the people are supporting you. And today in Benue State, uh, APC is completely rejected. Uh, it is not a party that we should be uh, having sleepless nights, and I'm, I'm not having one. And I want to say that uh, by the grace of God, we are going to beat them. Uh, they, they have no hold anywhere. The APC government have completely failed, and this leadership have nothing to offer. Uh, if we challenge them, those who have been there couldn't do anything and they have become a burden on the people of Benue State and those who are elected. And for once, we are going to end up uh, what you call God fatalism. For Benue State is dedicated to God. And so, uh, God Almighty uh, is our God and there is no room for God fatalism. That is one achievement we are going to do. I uh, want to assure you the people are quite satisfied. Despite the security challenges we have had during our period, uh, we've been able to achieve milestones in almost all sectors of the economy. Education, uh, rural development, agriculture, uh, and, and, and so on. Infrastructural development, we have been able to touch lives. And until the issue of uh, payment of salaries came, uh, 
and I was advised by the people because I run a government uh, that believes in collective uh, running of government with the people. And so they told me that I should prioritize the issue of payment of salaries. And since I left the APC, uh, because no more burden around to disturb me, I've been able to pay salaries from um, 1st of January uh, 2018 to date. What is left is the arrears. And when I had the last tranche of the Paris Club, we were able to dedicate 80% of the amount to clearing the areas of salaries, uh, pension, and gratuity. And the people are happy, the situation is, is, is calm, and everybody knows that it, is, it wasn't my own fault that uh, salaries were not paid. You are aware that we entered into a recession, and so what was coming in was very, very small. So it made things uh, difficult. And Benue State, as of today, is paying the highest salary uh, in Nigeria after Lagos and Rivers. Uh, those are the two issues. In fact, in some states in the north, what Benue State pays is double what they pay. And the statistics are there for anyone to see. So all this, the people have come to terms. We're not relenting. The House of Assembly also gave me approval and we have included it in the budget that we source for uh, funds from uh, whatever financial institution that will be friendly in terms of paying this money back. Uh, and so uh, issue of salaries is no longer a matter uh, as far as we're concerned in Bermuda State because we have succeeded in stopping all the projects that were going on. Um, concentration and priority attention is given to the issue of uh, salaries. So, uh, so far, we are good. And uh, by the grace of God, I have told the INEC and the security agencies that uh, do the right thing. Play the game by the rules that you are giving to us. And for us, we are ready. But there will be no room for anyone to attempt to do any form of rigging in Benue State. And I've debunked the insinuation from the leader of the APC, Senator Akumi, in Benue State, who said he will bring federal might. I'm sure Buhari will not allow that kind of federal might, his federal might to come against Benue State and to do illegal things. It's just that uh, with what is happening with uh, the CGN, that will begin to doubt whether this government of APC will be willing to play the game by its rules, by ensuring that the right thing is done. Because it is the Constitution and the law that is protecting every individual here. Otherwise, when you go on the street, there are many powerful people, more than yourself, that can deal with you. And so they are afraid that if they do it, the law will sanction them. And so when we begin to do things which are wrong, and that is why we are completely against this, and I'm sure Mr. President is not aware uh, of what is happening, including the sacking of uh, the CGN. If he's aware, just like the issue of uh, is it Babachi, former SGF, no. Lawa Babachi, that he directed that he should be prosecuted. I'm sure he's not aware of this CGN matter. And that is why you, 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 you hear there are cronies there. And of course, you heard what our uh, First Lady the wife of the president said that this government is being run and manipulated by a cabal. I'm sure it's the cabal that is doing it. We did not elect a cabal into the office. I actively participated in electing President Muhammad Buhari into office. I did not elect any cabal. And that is why we're saying that this thing must stop. We need a president who can deliver on his promises who will respect the rules of the law, who will uphold our constitution as sacred and not try to uh, deviate from what the constitution said. We are not saying that um, no one should be sanctioned or punished. But how can you disregard the constitution uh, in the attempt of fighting corruption or whatever? and then sanction a, 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 the leader 
of a different arm of government. Follow the rules. Go to NGLC. And then whatever they recommend, you can now prosecute this person. In any case, if we talk about code of conduct, they will give you recommendation. Why didn't you remove him in the same manner you removed that one? Why? That is what we're asking, because he too was charged. So why are you not uh, doing it that way? We're not uh, supporting corruption by an organ. If he did it, let the law catch up with him. But let due process be followed. And that is what we're saying. So for us in Benue State, we're determined, we're committed, right from the primaries of the PDP, we made sure there was no manipulation in Benue. There was no primary said in, 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 in uh, APC uh, in Benue State. They just picked names and slotted them there. And so, but they are banking on uh, federal might. But I said there is no federal might anywhere. Even me, I can be federal might. And my people too are federal might because we belong to the Federation of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So we are all in the Federation. So we are there. The citizens of Benue also belong to the Federation of Nigeria. So the, the federal might they are talking about, it is we. It's about we. So we shall defend our vote and not allow anyone to tamper with it. So I want to appreciate you and to inform you that uh, let us be professional. Let the security men be professional. Let the media be professional. For me, I have nothing to hide, and I've always said it. And I have no sacred cow anywhere. If anybody knows it, bring it out. That is the point we are saying. We must preserve this country. We have no other country to fall back to. And I don't want to be seen in a situation where Nigerians will begin to migrate to begin into fact and getting it right and giving it to the public, castigating those who try to trespass on our law and so on. So I want to call on you to do that and I expect the security men, everyone that is given responsibility should try and do that. And I like to advise our leaders, including myself. I have gone back to read the citation of my oath of office. And I have seen that I used to assume that maybe or just, I just crammed it and, and read it on the surface of it, but I reflected on it. I want to advise our leaders, every one of us that have taken oath of office, you're either holding a Bible or a Quran. So it means you're not just taking the oath of office before uh, motor beings. You're also taking the oath of office before the Almighty God. So we should reflect on this, not just reading it. Reflect on it. The content of that, what does it say? What commitment are you making to Nigerians? What commitment are you making to God? And we should know that there is God. And one day, the day when the day of reckoning comes, we will all be forced to give account. Not just to men. We can deceive men. But how, can we deceive God? And so we should be careful about what is happening here today because of your personal interest. You sell yourself for crumbs and you forget about what will happen tomorrow to your children and your grandchildren and so on. I'll tell you the truth. We owe it a duty to preserve this country by ensuring that the right thing is, is, is done. About power, some of us, we are not uh, uh, bothered about what people do because power belongs to God. God rules in the affairs of men. And uh, the psalmist says that uh, God has spoken twice in that here that power belongs to God. And John 3, 27 says, a man can receive nothing except is given to him from above. If God wants you to be there, you'll be there. And that is why, for some of us, this part of our incubacy as governors, we have allowed other political parties to, to search, to seek for it. If God decides that it's them, that is all. We'll go home and sleep. But not through rigging machinery of any political party or anyone. 
trying to deceive us. But if you come and God crowns you, we are ready to concede and, and work with you. We are not intimidating our opponents. We want a free and fair elections that will usher in credible leaders that the people want. As long as that's happened, we have no issue whatsoever. So once again, I thank you very much. Thank you. But the arrears of salaries is still there, patience and gratuity. When we got the last tranche of Paris Club, 80% of this was dedicated to reducing the arrears. Good salaries, pensions, and gratuity. We are still sourcing for funds, loan, bond, to see if we can clear this. That I have the mandate of the House of Assembly to do it, and it's in our budget, we're working towards that. And by the grace of God, it's achieved. So, to a large extent, the place is relatively calm when it comes to issues of salaries. Like I told you, the issue of election, we are ready to concede defeat where there is a transparent, free, and fair process. But anything short of that will not be accepted. Will not be accepted. And so uh, there are a procedure. When they get it wrong, we will come in. The worry is that now that the judiciary is being bacchanized by the federal government becomes a source of worry to us. And that is why we're insisting that the presidency must reverse what they did because they have no power whatsoever. I'm not a lawyer, but we're learned people. Um, we also read the Constitution. The provisions are very clear. And in any case, like I said, if you're talking about a uh, code of conduct recommending um, uh, you to suspend the CGM. How about the, 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 the chairman of the code of uh, conduct himself, who is also being prosecuted? So these are the contradictions. But like I said, I'm sure Mr. President is not aware of this. Just as we hear about several things, when you talk, you say he's not aware. <laughs> so I'm sure it's the same thing. And that is why we are pushing that Mr. President must know that what he did was wrong, so that he'll be aware. And I believe that if he's aware, just like the issue of uh, Lao Ababachi, he will also ask for the needful to be done, so that they will reverse that decision. OK. So, uh, you uh, the issue of RDPs, yes, we've been told that they are going to vote within the camp. But the result will be transmitted to the awards. That is what we were told. And uh, we're going to have agents. For now, I have no reason whatsoever to doubt the operations of INEC in Benway State, and uh, even concerning the IDPs. Uh, if there is any, I will raise alarm. But for now, I commend the transparent manner the INEC commissioner is doing his work. But I'm watching them closely. <coughs> If there is anything, I will raise alarm and we will reject it. Uh, and so I'm confident that it work because the fact that they are displaced and they cannot go to the RDP camps today, they should have the opportunity to vote. About 180,000 are still in the camps that we established. They are still there. Uh, over 500,000 are living with relatives. Those ones, I believe, they will find a way of getting back to their polling units on the day of voting or at those IDP camps. But what is important is our agents will be there to supervise and ensure that there is no shortchanging of any kind. Uh, and so let the people vote uh, whoever they want of their choice. We have no issue with that at all. All that we're saying is left. Our own government is anchored on the fear of God and issues, core values like uh, transparency, truthfulness, equity, fairness, justice, selflessness, uh, are, are, are issue that will anchor our government on. And we don't want to compromise. And so once the right thing is done, we have no problem. Yes. And that Mr. President is not aware of something. <laughs> when we were attacked and he directed the IGP, to go to the relocated Benway State. And the man went to Nasarawa. And when he came, we confronted him. He said he was not aware. 
And there are other, many other things of not, Mr. President, not being aware that you know. Even when the CGM was to be arranged, was Mr. President aware? I think we were told by the VP that Mr. President was not aware. Did you not hear it? Or did you not see it on the pages of newspaper? So that is the point I am saying. So maybe this one too is not aware. Because I have not met him one and one, so I would know. I want to assume. So he may not be aware. That is what I am not holding brief for him. So we want him, and you journalists too can help us uh, get him to be aware. <laughs> so that we know, because that is the challenge we, we have. But you also had, of course, our mother in the nation, Aisha Buhari, came out crying that. The, the husband is no longer ruling. It's the Kaba. A Kaba. And women should talk. If I undress now, you see that I'm a man. So that is what I'm talking. You know? So we must talk. That is the point that I'm doing it. I'm doing it in support of our mother, the first lady. Because this is a clarion call that all of us should stand up and chase that Kaba away because we did not elect any Kaba in that villa. I know that I'm being persecuted because the Kaba don't like me. They do all kinds of things. EFCC have been chasing me, chasing my staff in the past 10 months. I'm not at rest, and I've not done anything wrong. But they've been chasing me all over the place. Persecution is so much, threats, including about my life. If I die today, the federal government should be held responsible. They are responsible because they, 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 they are planning to even eliminate me. But I'm not going to stop. I will continue to defend my people. The primary responsibility of any responsible government is to defend the people, provide security for lives and property. So that apologies to whosoever is not happy with what I'm doing, I will continue to do it because my uh, allegiance remains to the people who elected me. And I must defend them and their mouthpiece. I must speak for them. They cannot do it on their own. And so I remain committed to this. With my life or no life, I will do it. We'll take oh, no. The, 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 the last question. Uh, you should be mentioning the person's name. It was Jimbo. And this one, I don't hide my things now. You said I was a drowning man. Uh, and I, I, you, you, you heard what the National Assembly, the resolution from the National Assembly, asking him to withdraw from that statement. And the then IGP should withdraw him from that position. He's not responsible enough to hold that office. For me, whether the worst commissioner of police you bring to Benue State or whoever, when you come, you must be professional in your doing. You don't attempt to do anything like that. I will raise an alarm. I will go to court. We have just gotten a judgment recently. When the IGP, the, the, the former IGP, rose up and, uh, and said that life's so bad, it should be disbanded. And sent police after them to be arrested. I took them to court and I defeated him. He doesn't have the right because the law in Benue State is binding. It went through due process and we enacted it. I personally signed it. And so it is binding on all citizens, including uh, IGP. And so the court told him clearly that he has no right because the, 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 the livestock guard are covered by the law we enacted. So I defeated him. So I believe in the rule of law. So if you come and you're professional, I will work with you. But if not, there are ways of ensuring that the right thing is done, just like we took them to court. The courts are still there, and I will do that. The first one, of course, they are godfathers now, uh, all over the place. Me, I have said no. My eyes are open, and I will continue to have godfathers making and uh, distorting uh, facts. Since I left godfathers, I've been paying salaries now. I was not paying salaries before. Uh, you know, and uh, you, you, you are aware that those godfathers had given me automatic ticket in um, uh, APC so that I would remain there and they would rubbish me. You know? 
But I said, no. I want due process to be followed. And when they said, no, I decided to leave. And so those are the kind of things I'm saying. The godfather of APC in Benue State is George Akumen. Everybody knows that. He's a leader of the party here in PDP. Once you are uh, uh, a governor, you become the leader of the party in your state. But in APC, even when I was governor, there was a, a different leader. Senator <laughs> George Akumen. And then he heard the ask, whatever he decided, took place. And so now I'm a free man, just like a bird that I've been let loose from a cage. Yeah. And you know, I'm flying without pitching because yeah. I've been in bondage for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I've said it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've said it. The security situation in Benue State is, is, is calm. But we are not there yet. But we we'll look forward that we'll get there. Uh, but let me say this. Uh, the issue of enforcement of security remains the prerogative of the federal government because they own the coercive forces. And, and so it's not. But the Constitution allows us to make laws. But the enforcement of this law is purely the responsibility of the federal government. You know, for quite some time, we've been clamoring for restructuring and also state policy. These are issues around it because we don't want to be seen as doing illegal things by arming militia uh, men uh, to support us in any way. That is why our livestock guard are not armed, our vigilante group are not armed, uh, but they complement what the conventional security men and women do. So well, that is it.